everyone, welcome back to the Triathlon Weekly News Roundup presented by TheFeed.com. I'm back in the US, you can't tell because it's still a green screen, but back here from Girona, it feels really good to be back. I had such a good time there. I actually was filming a video with Yuri Kulin while I was there. There was also tons of other pros, Martin Van Riel, Kyle Smith, his two biggest competitors, Vincent Louis, uh, tons of people there. Swimming next to Cassandra Bogrand, Olympic gold medalist in the pool was, uh, yeah, quite humbling. And uh, yes, yeah, super excited to release that video with Yuri. Coming up just before Ibiza, that race is gonna be insane. But I'm also excited to do some more training myself. I did quite a bit of swimming while I was out there, a little bit of running. But uh, yeah, good to be back on my A2 bike and prepping for Vegas T100. I hope to see some of you guys out there. That one's gonna be really fun just before Kona. And then my other big race this year, I'm doing a World Series swim run event in Austin, Texas a couple weeks afterwards. So excited to head out there. I've never been to Austin, heard some great things. I've only done one swim run before, but it was the best fun ever. So can't wait to do a team swim run out there in Austin. But this week on the news show, we've got so many races to go over. I probably actually won't even cover them all, but I think you need to know about them because they had all some big headlines that will pretty much cover most of our news today. A couple other uh, big things we'll talk about at the end, but let's dive into it. Race results to get into. Let's start off with probably the smaller ones first and then work our way to the biggest races. First of all, World Triathlon, Carlo Vivari. John Reed picked up the biggest win of his life so far ahead of Casper, who is kind of transitioning to a long course. I think he'll be a big threat over there, but he's hanging on to racing short course for now and doing pretty well. But then over on the women's side, Maya Kingma made a massive breakaway on the bike with another uh, Hungarian athlete, and they stayed away the whole time. They got a three minute gap on the bike, why I'm so animated about this is because it never happens that much in World Triathlon short course racing anymore. And you have to imagine that's all because of this course. It's such a tough course, a big hill right out of the swim, and that's where they made their move. And that's why we need to see more courses like this, especially in WTCS. And we're gonna talk about that a lot more later on. But the other big headline from this race was it was streamed on YouTube. You didn't have to pay for Triathlon Live which is uh, you know, about $40 a year, not too bad, but it looks like World Triathlon's making a huge move over to Facebook and YouTube, so you can watch it for free. And it's the, gonna be the same thing this upcoming weekend for Valencia. So you'll be able to watch these four course races I always talk about on YouTube for free, and that is so good for the sport. And I don't know why Super Try isn't doing that right now, but we'll get to them in just a second. Sunshine Coast 70.3. Big win for Ben Hamilton here over Nick Thompson. Those two guys are two young guns coming up probably at the same rate, both uh, extremely strong on the bike and the run and uh, getting better on the swim. Uh, but yeah, Ben just edged out Nick there. And then a young gun in her first season as a pro, long course triathlete, Milan Agnew, she won the women's race there. Keep an eye out for her, remember this name. She's got like five podiums already this year. And uh, yeah, she's coached by Hayden Wilds coach. So big things for Milan coming up. You heard her name here first. But then never kind of smaller race, but an epic one was Trathlon de Gerard May. Don't know how to say that correctly, but it's a brutal middle distance race with a tough bike and run course. And you can tell by the times that they finished in. The big headline here was Ashley Gentle is beaten at this race. You wouldn't expect her to be beaten at a non-PTO middle distance race, but she was by Alanis Seferit, a super young athlete, comes from a short course background, absolutely crushed it. Uh, I believe she's coached by Brett Sutton as well. His athletes are just doing so well right now. And uh, yeah, broke the course record, beat Ashley Gentle. That's a name we won't want to forget anytime soon as well. And then Josh came fifth on the men's side in what was a super tight race there, but Simon Vane took the win. But then moving on to Super Tri London, this one looked the most packed I've seen a Super Tri race yet. Alex Yee, though, the Olympic gold medalist who was supposed to show off in front of his home crowd here still didn't make that front group. He managed to stay for one set of the triathlons. They do three triathlons back to back. Um, this year, it's only that format. And he stayed there in contention for the first round, but on the second round on the swim, he got dropped and that front pack was Basically all that remained for the rest of the race and then Hayden Wild just smashed it on the run as you can expect. He had a short shoot over Matt Hauser and then took the win. But yeah, Alex Yee, 
just kind of jinxed you'd have to think with his new gold helmet and his gold bike that uh, Trek gifted him. So, yeah, he said he's just mentally tired from the Olympics and everything going on. He's got a month now of a break before Toulouse, which is the big one. I'm telling you, if you don't watch any Super Try, I'd put this one on. The fans are even crazier than they were there in London. By the way, love the drone shots that they had here in London. I think those are spectacular and it should be a feature on every triathlon race but thankfully for alex his girlfriend kind of stole the show on the women's race she made a couple of big breakaways on the bike she wasn't as strong on the run but she'd always catch up on the swim and go for it on the bike again olivia matthias definitely a name that's coming into her own however georgia taylor brown she is back in full strength back-to-back -back wins now looking like the favorite to take this whole super tri title same as the men's race cassandra brown grant didn't have the short shoot she got so close but wasn't able to do it. I think to lose for the women's is going to be epic as well when everyone has a few weeks now to build up some more fitness and get ready for it. And then the grand final in Neon. I really, really have to say this was my favorite ace yet. You have to mention Will McCloy. This guy is just the best commentator. This clip of him yelling for the finish just made my day. When she looks behind her, oh, so it's maybe not. Yet. It could be a one-two for those in red. In fact, Bo Gran could steal it from Taylor Brown. It's going to be a sprint for the finish. It's Taylor Brown in the red. She's going to take it at home ahead of Cassandra Bo Gran. But then moving on to two challenge races with two really small start fields. And this was Challenge Beijing and Challenge Samarkand. Starting off with Samarkand. Big headline, Christian Blumenfeld, Gustav Eden going 1-2 for the first time since PTO Edmonton in 2022. And yeah, I put up a headline there on Instagram. Will they be able to do the same thing in Kona? It looks like Rico Bogan make a breakaway right at the end of the bike on this one, but struggled in the heat. That guy really doesn't like the heat. Christian kind of easily ran him down and then Gustav as well. But it looks like Gustav is getting more and more into form. He's got six weeks now to try and close that gap to Christian, who really does seem like the favorite going into Kona. But Rico Bogan said in his Instagram post, remember he's the 70.3 world champion, he said Gustav Eden is back. So it is going to be so fun to watch them in Kona coming up real soon. And on the women's side, Laura Madsen, that 22-year-old, she outbiked everyone by like 11 minutes, easily cruised to the win. And then over in Challenge Beijing, which was a race that I really think the PTO should adopt. And you've probably heard likes of Greg Bennett say that we need to have this racing format again. And that is the Olympic non-draft racing. It is short, fast, and super exciting. Kyle Smith took the win on his 27th birthday, but it was Mark Dubrick who made him work for it. And the big headline here for me was that Mark had to rent a bike in the lead up to this one, his bike never made it. I actually made it the night of the race afterwards. But yeah, he ran the quickest 10K on the day. Picked up second there ahead of short course athletes like Henry Schumann, Tyler Mislachuk, who was racing there. Freddie Funk was the other headline for me. He managed to break away from this group, including Kyle Smith, who has been said to be pretty much undroppable on the bike. He got a big lead coming into T2, but wasn't able to hold it off. Fun images here of seeing him run in what were some terrible wet conditions out there. And over on the women's side, it was Julie Duran, who was the big headline. She was on a TT bike for this race, post her Olympic silver medal, but she wasn't able to keep up with Paula Finley and Lucy Byram on the bike. She managed to keep it somewhat in contention, but they were too far gone. She definitely ran the fastest 10K there by quite a margin, but Paula was too strong after not racing the Olympic distance in a very long time. She said, uh, yeah, not running with socks and no watch was quite an adjustment. She had an 11 week break coming off of um, a lot of racing earlier on in the season. So really good for her uh, coming into Ibiza. And also before that, coming into the TT World Championships, which will take place the same weekend as Nice. So yeah, Paul is firing on all cylinders. Can't wait to see how she does there in Zurich in Switzerland for that TT World Champs. Julie Duran, probably not the next person to challenge Taylor Nib. You'd have to imagine over the middle distance. I think we all underestimate how much of an adjustment it is to ride those TT bikes at the paces that these top athletes are going. 
But actually, one more thing on Challenge real quick is that they just announced a really interesting race on Surbani Yas Island in the Middle East, which is going to be a full distance race in 2025, as well as a middle distance race. But it's super unique because they say it's going to be the most sought after triathlon festival in the world. And uh, the check-in area will apparently be on a cruise ship and it's on an island and there's oryxes there, giraffes, gazelles, and obviously putting a lot of money into it. Uh, Henry Scoobin was in the advert, as you can see, and uh, sounds like there's gonna be a pro race there. So keep your eyes out for that race next year. Real quick break in the news to tell you about our sponsor this week, and that is Fuelin. If you haven't heard of them before, if you haven't heard Jan Ferdino talking about them, it's an amazing nutrition app that syncs with your training plan, whatever you're doing, and it gives you daily nutrition guidance, exactly what you're supposed to eat and how you're supposed to fuel your training and racing. You could go on and on about it. But one of the coolest features of it, and that makes tracking food so simple, is called Scooter. That lets you talk to your phone and it will log exactly where you're eating, which makes it so much easier than having to look everything up and input it one by one. For me right now, I'm having a banana and a quarter cup of Brazil nuts for my snack. And right away, I'll just go to my phones and talk to Scooter and say one banana and a quarter cup of Brazil nuts. And there you go. It gives me all my macros broken down for me as well as my calories. And that way I know I'm in good shape. I'm right on track for Vegas. I feel really good doing so. But we can move on now to the news. Just a few headlines and then one big one this week. Gwen Jorgensen, I thought this one was funny. She kind of teased us on Instagram by hinting she was going to go to long course. Said she's been enjoying wearing a tri suit for the first time and then was wondering how a tri bike might be. And the comments just went off with people wondering whether she was going to go to long distance. And I was kind of hoping so myself because we hadn't heard too much of what she was going to do next. But it's definitely not the case. She kind of answered that on YouTube on her long run video saying, not going long course for now. Uh, she's going to stick with short course and actually she's leaning even shorter. Sounds like she'd be interested in doing a super try more than long distance at the moment. So that's kind of a bummer. I'd love to see her go long, but uh, yeah, hope to see her on a start list soon. Uh, but obviously she's recovering still from that injury slowly but surely on the swim. But then also another Instagram post that stirred up some attention was Sam Lalo. Sadly, his garage and his pain cave was destroyed by a fire that was caused by his air compressor suddenly going up in flames, apparently a short circuit. Thankfully, he was all okay, just some damage to motorbikes, turbo trainers, and TVs. But uh, yeah, he did use the hashtag afterwards, burning for Kona, which is what Jan used to say. Um, but yeah, really glad nothing worse there. That would have been tragic. And then the other big announcement this week was the official start list for that Nice World Championships was released. 51 women by my count uh, gonna be racing there. And Tri Rating does a full report of the world champs every year, which is available on his website, which is just amazing. Uh, a couple big takeaways there I thought was interesting was the average age of the women for this world champs was 34 years old, which to me seems a little bit older uh, than I would have expected. I have mentioned this before, um, that the women's long distance scene is quite a bit older than the men's long distance. But it's really exciting seeing the young names on there. And uh, yeah, more and more, like we just mentioned earlier, coming up the ranks and should be the next Lucy Charles Barclays uh, soon enough. But other than that, big news was Taylor Nib wasn't given that wild card. It sounds like officially now. Senya Thos looks like wasn't able to make it back in time after her bike crash incident, sadly. And then Lisa Norden, not quite ready for the full distance just yet. And Amelia Watkinson has decided not to race this one after qualifying. So, yep, those are the big headlines. But it's coming up real soon. Everyone sounds like they're either in Nice or been to Nice and are now just finishing up their last bit of training. And it's just gonna be such a good race. I mean, I think Lucy Charles Barkley is definitely the favorite coming into this one, having erased it earlier in the year. Although her slight injury there in London at the T100 race kind of mixed things up a little bit. But yeah, it's just gonna be so different to Kona. The men showed that. When Lucy did it earlier this year, she rode five hours and 16 minutes on the bike and went 9.03 overall. And that is just gonna change everything 
as far as the race goes. I put a poll on the website as well saying, where do you think the race was going to be won? And it was pretty split, 50-50 that it was going to be on the bike or the run and just 1% or 2% for the swim. And pretty much nobody voted for it on the swim. But I think if Lucy comes out of the water with a gap like she did in Kona, she could take this wire to wire again. So could be the swim that makes the difference. I also put my other poll of the week on the website there was who has the upper hand right now? Who's had a better season, T100 or the Ironman Pro Series? And most of you voted T100, it was pretty close. But this is where I think the Pro Series is really gonna start coming into its own with all the points, with the every second matters where people will be keeping an eye out on how much time is elapsing in the races between each competitor and starting to count the points. So yeah, keep an eye out for the Pro Series. It's gonna start getting heated up. Last bit of news, Sam Renouf was on for an update podcast with the Triathlon Hour Jack Kelly, and I've got the big headlines coming out of this one for you. First one, we've all been wondering what the heck's going on with the grand final. Where is that going to be? Is it going to even happen? It sounds like definitely not going to be the original plan, which by the sounds of Sam sounded like they had an amazing place uh, all ready to go, but it just hasn't been able to happen. So they've been working on contingencies and the answer to that will should be announced by the end of this week or early next week they said they'll let the athletes know the beginning of Sem September so that's pretty much come and gone so I'd imagine they know already but yeah still don't know for certain what's going on there um, the other big thing was he was asked about the drafting situation which we all know has been pretty bad in the T100 races and Sam just outright called it what it is and that's cheating and it clearly says he knows it's a big problem and that they are working on it. Um, when talking about penalties as well, they said he's got a day-long meeting with World Triathlon about this. I think it's the number one outdated thing in the sport where the penalty time limits need to be adjusted and made shorter and made to improve the race and not make it worse. And he totally agreed with Jack as well on that in the podcast. And uh it just sounds like there's a lot of red tape now that they work with World Triathlon. Everything has to go through a strict process. So it might take a while for that to come into effect, but it sounds like they know and they do want to fix it. I was also super intrigued about their Dubai race. He shared that they have 15,000 participants across all the events. That is huge, considering when you know Ironman is about four or 5,000 people at their biggest event. So clearly the PTO is doing something right as far as getting participants into the sport. And that was kind of a theme I found of the podcast is that Sam was really talking about how that is their goal. What they pitched to uh, investors is getting it to be these triathlon festivals. And I'm excited to experience it myself in Vegas. This will be one of their standalone events, Ibiza as well. So uh, yeah, interested to see how those two go as they do it on their own. But sounds like they can do it with Dubai. And uh, yeah, fascinating to hear about that. We also got some insight into 2025 and 2026 and what's going to stick around. Are the PTO doing well? And yeah, it sounds like they're doing really good. Sam said they get a lot of people approaching them for investment. He said money is easy these days, but they have to partner with the right people. It sounds like Ibiza, Singapore, London and Dubai for sure next year. Miami for sure not. So that leaves us a lot of gap for what could be 10 races next year. We've heard in the past before or nice was supposed to be one or southern france was supposed to be a destination but got cut out this year last minute so i'd expect to see that one morocco we've heard talks with the pto before australia and i know that's one they've got to target canada as well we saw pto edmonton before that race was awesome so yeah it's going to be exciting to hear when all those announced sounds like it'll be trickled out slowly and then the final thing that Jack really challenged Sam on was how he thought the 100K distance was not necessary and that we could mix it up. We could have a 200K distance in there. We could have a shorter race and how that would let different athletes shine at different races. I couldn't agree with him more. This is something I've always been saying as well. And I just think it would make the races much less predictable. I think it's great right now that they have different climates that we saw in San Francisco and Singapore super hot. But I really think they need to mix up the distances. And that's why I thought Challenge Beijing's Olympic non-draft would be a great fit for this. Jack also mentioned doing a mountaintop race where they go 30Ks on the bike up the mountain and then run up there. And 
yeah, I think like Gerard May would be a great example of that. Alp Duez would be a great example as well. Mix up the distances, keep it fresh. But it just sounds like because PTO is focused on these triathlon festivals, making it, you know, a viable product, uh, and they really want to nail this 100k distance first. It sounds like that won't change for at least a couple of years, but it is something that they're open to and they've talked about a lot before. So yeah, exciting. I wish they could change it quicker, but yeah, I think they are more focused than we think on the participant side of things these days. But that's it pretty much this week. Hot question I'm going to leave you with is, what would you change about the PTO uh, if you were Jack and could ask Sam anything and tell him he should do something with the PTO? What would you tell them? And then and that's it. And then we've got Nice the weekend after that. I'm excited to talk to you about that race. Thanks, guys, so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.